3D animation software are not created for animation only because they have other important functions that can be used for. Also, to create an animation, you need to learn how to create characters, environments, effects, and so on. We're going to take a general look at how to use 3D animation software from scratch, from start to finish. There are nine major steps that we need to go through to create an animation movie. Number one, we're going to start off with modeling. The first thing we need to do is to create the world in which the action will take place. This includes characters and environments. Modeling characters differs from modeling environments in many different ways, and both disciplines take different skills and experience. Usually in animation and game development studios, there is a character artist and there is an environment artist because modeling usually is the most time-consuming process since it is the bridge between 2D concepts and illustrations and 3D. So all the steps that come later will depend on the modeling process and what is involved in it. Usually 3D software come equipped with tools that will make this process faster and easier depending on how familiar you are with the software. You can use basic geometry to kick off the process, then you start to modify the position of the vertices, edges, polygons, and so on in the 3D space. Over the years, the process of modeling is becoming easier and faster with the new tools and the technologies that are developed to make the process faster and efficient. Number two, sculpting. Sculpting is the process in which a 3D artist will add details that cannot be added in a standard 3D application like Maya or 3ds Max because they don't have the ability to sculpt with few exceptions like Blender which has a competitive sculpting abilities. Usually a character artist will bring the model from a standard 3D application and start adding wrinkles, pores, scars, and all the imperfections necessary to take it to the next level of detail. The best sculpting software is by far ZBrush from Pixelogic, but there are also other sculpting software that can do a good job too, but ZBrush is always the king of sculpting. In the process, a 3D artist will subdivide the model to millions of polygons to have a greater control on how the surface is shaped. And the interesting thing about 3D sculpting is that it's similar to what a real-life sculptor does. The only difference is the tools and the control Z, which refers to the ability to go back to fix mistakes when you sculpt something on the software. Number three, retopology. Retopology is necessary for making the sculpted 3D model less polygon dense for practical reasons that will affect the next steps down the line. Basically, retopology is taking the 3D model from having millions of polygons to a few thousands depending on how complex it needs to be. This process can take place in a standard 3D application like Maya, 3ds Max or Blender, and also it can be done using a third-party application like Topogun which can make the process easier and faster and much efficient. Number 4. UV Unwrapping UV Unwrapping or UV Mapping is the process of turning the surface of a 3D model or character into a 2D flat surface that can be used for generating maps and textures later. This process is harder when it comes to characters and you need to be good at it because characters, skin and clothes are going to be moving all the time and this might cause some technical problems that will be dealt with later in rigging and animation. Number 5. Texturing Texturing, or what is called surfacing, is the process of painting the surfaces of objects using specialized software like Substance Painter, Mari, or Pixel Suite. In this part of production, objects and characters come to life when a texturing artist adds textures and materials. This process used to be completely manual and it used to be harder and much more time consuming than it is today. Using the software I mentioned before like Substance Painter took the texturing process to the next level and made it faster and more accurate because they are procedural and they have presets and ready materials and masks that do the heavy lifting for the artist which allows for creativity and a higher level of detail and complexity. Number 6. Rigging. Rigging is a technique used in skeleton animation for representing a 3D character model using a series of interconnected digital bones. Specifically, rigging refers to the process of creating the bone structure of a 3D model. This bone structure is used to manipulate the 3D model like a puppet for animation. Pretty much anything can be rigged. A spaceship, a soldier, a flower, an animal. It doesn't really make a difference what the object is. Adding bones will allow any object to be animated freely. Rigging is most common in animated characters for games and movies. 
This technique simplifies the animation process and improves the production efficiency. Once rigged with skeletal bones, any 3D object can be controlled and distorted as needed. In the entertainment industry, rigging is a major step in the standard way of animating characters. Achieving smooth and complex animations is entirely dependent on the quality of the rigging phase in the animation pipeline. Number 7. Animation Animation is always done after rigging has been completed. Engine physics will use the rig if you animate a specific point. The rest of the structure will follow so that you don't have to animate every single word. There are many techniques of animation that animators will use depending on the results they want to get or the type of animation needed. There is keyframe animation, driven keyframe animation, nonlinear animation, path animation, and motion capture, which is basically capturing the data from real actor suits and tweaking it in the computer to get better results. Number 8. Lighting Lighting is a determining factor because it can make the previous work you did look better and sometimes if the lighting is poorly executed it will make the scene look bad. Lighting is very complicated and it will take a physicist to explain what is going on when we use a light in a 3D environment. Basically the goals of lighting in 3D computer graphics are more or less the same as those in the real world lighting. Lighting serves a basic function of bringing out or pushing back the shapes of objects visible from the camera's view. It gives a two-dimensional image on the monitor as an illusion of the third dimension depth, but it does not just stop there. There are different types of lights for different types of environments and different scenes. Also, interior lighting and exterior lighting differ in many ways. Each light source can be broken down into four distinct components and analyzed accordingly. Number 1 Intensity, Number 2 Direction, Number 3 Color, and Number 4 Size. Number 9 Visual Effects. Visual effects or VFX are very powerful and can make the experience much richer and intense for the viewer. Usually standard 3D applications like Maya and 3ds Max are capable of generating effects, but there are some specialized 3D software that can do the job even better. Effects vary from water simulations, fire, wind, storms, destruction, explosions, and even subtle things that the viewer don't pay attention to like footsteps, fingerprints, fog, and so on. Usually visual effects are done inside the standard 3D application using a third-party tool or plugin that can be integrated with it in order to create these nice effects. So these are basically the steps or the categories of action you need to take in order to work with a 3D animation software. Of course, each step here is a major thing and usually in animation studios and in-game development studios, each step we talked about is assigned to a person who is specialized and have skills and have experience that he or she cultivated over the years. So if you want to learn animation software from start to finish, uh, it's going to be a very hard thing to do. And if you do everything, you're going to be called a generalist. And of course, there are, there are generalists who can actually uh, have a good knowledge and a good experience when it comes to all these steps for creating animations for films and for games. But as a generalist, you're not going to be very good at all these steps and skills necessary in order to create a 3D animation. But if you want to specialize and pick one or two of these skills, you're going to be a specialist and you're going to have much better chance at excelling and getting exceptional results. Like you can be a character modeler or you can be an environment artist, you can be a rigger or an animator or you can be um, and you can be a lighting artist. You pick what suits you best. But of course, in the beginning, you need to be kind of a generalist, try lots of things in order to figure out what suits you the best. And later, when you figure out what you're going to do, you're going to go with it and learn it to the maximum and become the best at it. But of course, there is one problem you need to go through, which is that there are so many programs out there and choosing the one that you're going to work with is going to be a little bit difficult. And for this, I have many videos talking about the different software that you need in order to start your 3D career or your 3D hobby. And of course, it all comes to your personal preferences and you're going to have to do your research, of course, and you're going to try and test what works for you depending on multiple elements like the pricing, whether it is paid or free, and its complexity and the tutorials available online around this particular software. But in the end, it is a trial and error process. Everyone kind of 
uh, find a certain or particular program appealing and good to use for his particular needs. And of course, to do this and learn the 3D software, there are a lot of resources out there and the internet has matured and we have lots of free tutorials and paid courses all over the place. Pick the 3D software that you are going to be using and try to learn as much as you can and you're going to be in your way for becoming a better 3D artist. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please let us know in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next one.